greetings. Jesus Christ. <laughs> greetings, 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 greetings. <laughs> greetings, 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 greetings. Ah! It's Sir William. A lot of you all have been asking and saying, oh, I've been being quiet. Bitch, I'm so glad. I'm so glad that you pulled me out in my in my right element. Don't touch that dial, Mary Tyler Mort. <laughs> Not quite, son, but I do appreciate the Haitian culture. I'm Fire Marshal Bill Burns, and nobody likes a quitter. Jesus Christ. Okay, I'm recording now. So, okay, how, how, okay, maybe I need to, how did you get in contact with William McCray and how do you, how do you know him? I had known him since I, when I lived in Atlanta, before I moved to where I live now in Ohio, um, I was starting my acting career and we kept crossing paths because, you know, he's big in the, the church scene in Atlanta. Atlanta got mega churches almost on every block, man. Right. And um, he was big in that church gossip scene and doing the blogging thing. He, he, he had just started doing his obnoxious stuff. And he was going around looking for dirt on church people. And I had just started going back to church, man, because for a long time, I didn't go to church because I had some bad, bad experiences. And um, he started covering... I was going to Newburgh, Bishop Eddie Long, and he started covering that. And that's how I met him in the church scene, but I saw him in the acting scene because he was doing a little bit background work just like I was on, on films around town. And I would see this guy, I said, who is this flamboyant looking dude with his hair all slicked back? That was before he started wearing them lace fronts and everything. Why, he had a and, curl. Yeah, he had a jerry curl, and, uh, but he would pass out telling everybody that was naturally great of his hair. And he was wearing these fancy uh, suits and but he just pretended, he always pretended to be more than he was. But, you know, around Atlanta, all you had to do was just name drop. He, he knew how to put himself in certain circles. And, uh, you know, I graduated from Ohio, but nobody really vetted him, you know, to make sure he was telling the truth. Just took, pretty much took him at his word. And uh, he got in good with some big people and, and, and made himself known at uh, industry events and what have you. And I would see him at these events and these networking events. Next thing I know, he was doing the blog. So one of my um, one of my uh, friends, who's a filmmaker, wanted him to be in our film because she figured it would be good, you know, have him hyping it up because he had a, he had a media presence in Atlanta. He did. He did. Yeah. And at first, he was really out there doing really good stuff, but now, I guess now, it went to it again. And because that when I first met William, he was doing like. He wasn't doing church stuff. Was he was doing everything. He was doing everything like art, music, art, music film, music. anything black, anything black celebrity. He was in it. He was doing that. Like even when I saw him in that one movie, um, Dirty Laundry. Yeah, that's the one. That's the one. He was like a choir director in that little movie. Yeah, that's the one. And so I knew of him like around that time. And right. So, you know, he was doing stuff. And then I don't. It was. It wasn't until we came to St. Louis mm -hmm. that we started really getting dirt on preachers, and I was like, "Yeah, when did he, he took start a, this?" He started doing that kind of crap because uh, there was a lot of scandals with preachers, you know, like church, the Coptic Church, man. I mean, it's real bad in Atlanta. And he started doing. He started doing dirt on them preachers around town and blackmailing them and stuff. You know, these little up and coming preachers, they didn't want their name sullied, so a lot of them were just paying him off. And I guess that made him feel emboldened that he if he can get them like this, I guess he said, Hey, I'm gonna go to these big preachers. I know they got some dirt and I'm gonna just keep kicking rocks until something turns up. And that's how he got started doing that. And he went he left the whole secular world alone and just focused in on the church stuff. Because in the beginning, man, he was like I said, he was dealing with rappers, R and B singers. Anything black Hollywood, he was he was into that. He was just doing all that kind of stuff. 
because I met him like my, I started acting out first. I started doing stand up comedy around 2003. Then I went from that to film. And I met him when I started acting around 2005. And I've been knowing him since then. You know, off and on. Not, I didn't know him on a personal level because I never, we've never exchanged. I had his number. And because the lady asked me to get in contact with him, and I emailed him and everything. He said, well, send me over with the information about the film. Yeah, I'd be interested in da-da-da-da, because he wanted to get into film more, because I guess after he did that Dirty Laundry movie, he really liked it. Because mm -hmm. it gave him a bigger platform. Well, so I, mean, I said, well, he yeah. He didn't have, like, a really huge part in the movie. Yeah. He was just directing the choir. Right, and, 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 but he got the acting bug. You know, I started out doing background. That's how everybody started doing background work. So, but that gave him a, a platform to go even further, you know, out there. So he, she was offering him a speaking part, a major part, because she was trying to do a film about human trafficking. Mm -hmm. this, this lady I was working with, and, but she was trying to secure funding and everything, and it never got off the ground, but she had offered him the role and to shoot the pilot, and he agreed to be in it, and then the, Morning of the filming, because I was doing casting for the film, I made the connections. Dad talked. She had agreed to uh, bring him in, and he didn't show up. He didn't call. He didn't do nothing. No email, no phone call, no text, nothing. And she had spent her money and her investors' money at the time to secure a building, to pay people. I mean, she spent a couple thousand dollars for that one day of shooting. And he was the main person. So without him, there was no shoot that day. She lost all of that money. And a week or so later, I was like, man, what's up with you? Why did you do that? You know, I, I tried to reach him for like a week because it made me look bad. Because I was the one that recommended the guy. I was like, well, hey, you know, maybe you might want to get this guy. He just did Dirty Laundry. He's, he's local. He's got a little name out there on the Internet. You know, it'll, it'll be good for you. And she's like, yeah, I, I've been thinking about him. So that's how me and her agreed to reach out to him. Dude took, took, uh, took her money. Then uh, I said, you need to go out to him civilly or something. And she tried, you know, to locate him. He's very evasive, man. I mean, very evasive. You know, when somebody trying to serve papers on him. But, um, and a prominent preacher uh, who's got a very big ministry. I mean, he's world known out of Texas. Uh, went on and uh, slid her a little money. And she got... And she got, and she got that uh, situation squared away, so they didn't take her property. Cause she didn't have no money; she was crying broke. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, so I'm looking for it. What am I looking for? Just type. Uh, well, I need a bino foreclosure, Waycross, Georgia. That should pop it up. And if not, when I get home, I will look it up for you, and I'll send you some links. Mm hmm. Um. Cause. Cause it's gonna, it's gonna come up there because it was paid off and she didn't have no money. Okay, one evangelist is 2017. One of the bottoms, 4.5 million dollar South Georgia compound. I remember that one. That's it. That's it, brother. That's it. You're on, you're on the trail. Wait, this is skeptical. Um, Wait, she owed thirty-two thousand dollars in taxes on the house. Yeah, that's just the house. That's not counting the compound and the rest of that stuff. It was thousands of dollars, bro. Thousands. She owed a lot of money. Yes, sir. You own it now. This thing way bigger than than on uh, your boy. That's why he's trying to latch on to us. Because, see, he, she allows him access to the big, big preachers and the big, big money, bro. Follow that paper trail. That's, a, that's what I'm going to tell you. You think you're on to something now with him and a, an old blogfish, dude. You ain't even hit the iceberg yet. Well, I've been dragging one of the binder for years. Bro, you ain't even hit the iceberg yet. That's all I'm going to say to you. You ain't hit. Why need a binder? is just the door to the big fish. That's all I'm going to say to you. When you do that research and y'all get on that, you're going to go from a few thousand dollars to a couple of million real quick. You're going to get the big money, boys. That's all I'm going to say to you. You need to look at that. Look at it real hard, bro. You're about, you about to really open up a 
You might need a bodyguard after this. <laughs> Wait, a, a pre- is this preacher still alive? Yes, sir. And he's in Georgia. Mm, he's in Texas. He's in Texas. Mm-hmm. Well, you can't be talking about you can't be talking about TJ. No, sir. You get me wrong, bro. He's a big preacher in Texas. Mm-hmm. All right. And he's not TD Jakes. No, sir. Wait. I'm good. Are you serious? Yes, sir. Behind the scenes, you're going to be dealing with... In fact, not only are you going to be dealing with white people, you're going to be dealing with white people, the ones that still living, you're going to be dealing with them white people from them religious networks. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. That's why... Oh, hell no. That's why that guy over the Word Network... There you go. Come on. Yo. Oh, there you go. I ain't even you did no... Know. I haven't even did a story on that yet. But everything, everybody has been ran by something. Mm-hmm. Listen. My, hey, let me tell you this. Before my, my before Bishop Long scandal brought him down, you know who the number one cash cow for uh, TBN was? My pastor. Paul and Jan themselves came and presented him with awards and plaques because he was a number one. He had the highest rating show. Greetings, greetings. Greetings, greetings. Hello, Ralph. I guess I'm just a splash in the pan. <laughs> what? Let me tell you. Say something. Say something. What? Let me tell you. Say something. <laughs>